Okay, um, so if you've watched my videos to this point, you should have a general idea of how to set up your Firebase and a general idea of how to connect Flutterflow to Firebase. Um, so in this video, what we're going to go over real quick is how to create a list. Now, you can get very, very creative with your lists. Um, you can customize them pretty much to your heart's content uh, as to how you want your, your list to look. Um, but for the sake of just showing you how to um, set up a list and uh, and call data from your from your Firestore to that list, we're just going to do something very simple. Um, so I've got a blank page here. Uh, first thing I'm going to go to is my UI builder over here on the left side, and I'm gonna scroll down. Obviously, you got a Quite a few elements to work with in here, um, but the one I'm looking for is list view. So that's the first thing I want to grab. I'm just going to drop it over in here. Um, again, we could go through all this and what all these things mean, but we'll do that another time if you uh, if you want to know that stuff too. Okay, um, so now I have my my list view, um, but as you can see, it's just an empty shell. There's nothing there. All this is going to do is going to call the data from the back end but you actually need something to display. Um, and again, there's a million ways you can do this and a million ways you can make it look, um, but we're just gonna use their, their pre-made design uh, to kind of walk you through how this works. Um, so you wanna grab the list tile component over here. Um, there's also a, yeah, right here, there's also the slidable list tile, um, which both of these are basically the same, except this one you can press and hold and slide to the left and possibly to the right. I don't really know. I haven't tried that yet, but it gives you some extra options. So we'll, we'll use it just so you can see real quick. So once you drop that in there, you have a list. Um, you have the, be the beginnings of, of your uh, user interface that, that will display the data in a list form. Um, now again, you can make this look however you want. Over here, you can change your, uh, your text your, you know, your font type, your weight, font weight, your colors, um, and change the icons, whatever you want the, the uh, following icon, the trailing icon to be. Um, you can even set your leading icon if you'd like to. So there's an icon over here. Um, and then as far as the sliding action goes, uh, you can click on open slidable and you can see that that pulls that open right there. Um, so that's a that's a button. You can add another one if you want to. So you could have like a save button and a delete button, things like that. And you can close it. So you actually um, you have to set the the actions for these independently. But we're not going to do that right now. I just wanted to show you the slidable feature um, because it's pretty cool and I think it's a huge upgrade that Adalo does not offer. All right, so now we need to pull data um, to this to this list. Over here on the left side, under uh, under connect, this is my Firestore. So as you can see, it, they call it collections, kind of like what they do in Adalo. So that's a little bit familiar. Um, and this is the users collection that was set up for me whenever I created my Firestore link between Flutterflow and Firestore, uh, Firebase. I'm sorry. Um, and so you can create additional collections for whatever you're wanting, whatever kind of data you're wanting to store. Uh, just words the wise, I wouldn't suggest using the sub collection option right now. There's some little, little quirks in it that I haven't quite figured out. And I, I think it's that it's not quite developed yet on Flutterflow's side. So if you build out your entire app using sub collections, you may be disappointed kind of like what I was, uh, how I was. I, I had built several sub-collections and realized that it couldn't do what I wanted it to do. Um, and so it was pretty upsetting. But anyway, we're just going to work with the user's collection for the time being. Um, if you go up here to manage content, you can actually push data manually from Flutterflow. Uh, yeah from Flutterflow um, to your Firestore. So you don't have to like work in Firestore and then come back over and work in Flutterflow. You can do it all from Flutterflow. 
and you add a document. So this would be like me adding a, a user. I just put in that data, <clears throat> I click add document, and then it would create a, a document there. And we'll just do this. Um, oops. So you can see it created a user over here. And then let me, uh, let me go back to my Firebase. Okay, I'm gonna pull that over here real quick. Here's my Firestore that I created for this project. And you can see that that user that I just added in Flutterflow is, has been added to Firebase automatically. So it's kind of nice. All right, um, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to close that, and I'm going to go back over to my app, and I'm going to set up this list. So um, the easiest way to access the various components that are on a screen, instead of like trying to click up in here, as you can see, I'm only able to really click on the uh, on the tile, uh, the list tile. So as you know i added a list view first and then put the list tile inside the list view um, but i can't tap on the list view because the list tile is in the way so uh, opening up your tree your widget tree will give you access to all of those things that are kind of stacked behind so here's my list view and now i have access to my list view all right so over here in your um, settings and parameters and and uh, things like that for that component you want to set that list view to call up data from your firestore um, so these are this first tab is like your design second tab is going to be your action editor third tab is going to be your queries and that's where you're going to call data from your uh from your firestore um yeah we're not gonna yeah we're not gonna touch on that yet we haven't even gotten there and of course animation so um so query type i want to query a collection and because i've only got one collection made i'm going to query the user's collection and i want it to be a list of documents because i want this list to list all of my users that i've created so that's how i create a basic list to query information from a collection um, query collection, users, list of documents, or list of documents, I should say. You can set a limit if you want to. You know, I only want to show 10 users, or you can just do unlimited. Um, you can add filters. So you only show users based off of, you know, their created time, whatever. Um, order by, you can set that. I'll get rid of that real quick. Um, you can do infinite scroll, and that's going to help with your load times. So it'll load <clears throat> objects in the list as the user scrolls. So it's going to load up to 25 at a time. All right. So now I'm creating a backend query. And it's uh, telling me that I'm creating a, a list view. And it says that its children are, are going to be dy dynamically created from that collection. <clears throat> so again, I'm, I'm calling the data from the, uh, from the list view. And then its children are going to be the list tile. So I'm just going to confirm. And so now I have a list, um, which again, this is in testing, so it's not going to show anything. Um, but if I were to run the build or do a test run, then I could actually see the data that I'm pulling. So I'm going to do another video because um, my video time, my recording time for this video is about to cut off. I'm going to do one more video on this topic and show you how to set information on your list so that you can show uh, pull specific information from your um, query to show up here. And then I'll run it in a test so you can see what it looks like.